With all the talk about H1N1 influenza or swine flu lately, we kind of forget there's another very serious public health threat out there, and that's West Nile virus. Fortunately, the county veterinarian has been thinking a lot about West Nile virus and has even come up with better ways to help find it. Here's Dominic Fulgoni. If you've been paying attention to the cautions raised about West Nile virus during recent years, you'll know that the mosquito is the enemy here. But the mosquito would not be spreading this disease without these. <coughs> not chickens in particular, but birds in general. You see, birds become infected with West Nile virus regularly, and a mosquito has to bite one of these before it bites you. Birds, then, are one of the surveillance tools that we have, a way to monitor how much West Nile virus is out there. Now, you may have heard about sentinel chicken flocks. You see, chickens, while they can become infected by West Nile, don't die from the disease as other birds can. So the chickens are basically used as mosquito bait, and their blood is tested on a regular basis to get an indication of the prevalence of the virus. However, in addition to this, wild birds come into the vet's office that have died mysteriously, and they can't be tested in the same way. Testing the blood after an animal, uh, a, a bird has died, is problematic, and you really can't do the same test on the blood from a dead bird as you can from a live bird. So unlike a simple blood test, the wild birds needed a far more complex study. Take every single bird that you're going to test and collect the internal organs, things like the heart, the spleen, the kidney, and the brain sample to see if the bird had any virus within it. Um, and that was laborious, it was time consuming and costly to, to do. And last year was a busy year. This small office had to test over a thousand birds kind of born out of necessity that we needed to develop a, a better test, a more rapid test to handle all these birds. And so one of the scientists in our laboratory, in particular uh, Arlene Lim, was able to go through some um, research and help to develop this new technique of actually looking in the eyes of birds to see if that would be a better place to detect the virus. So what we're doing here is inserting a large bore needle into the eye um, to disrupt some of the eye tissues there and then collect the fluids from the eye within which any West Nile virus is going to, to be in. And we found that in fact the eye was a very good place to, to find the virus and in fact better and more sensitive than looking at internal organs. So not only were we getting a better technique involved, um, but we also found a, uh, a, a simpler and safer way to do it. And our processing time for collecting the sample was reduced from anywhere from, say, 15 to 20 minutes per bird using the old technique to as little as two minutes per bird using the new technique. The office has become the first place in the nation to apply this test to the detection of West Nile virus, and it will soon be adopted by the entire state of California. It may well be the national standard for testing in the future. And you can say it all started here in Kearney Mesa. Just so you know, that bird being tested did in fact test positive for West Nile virus. Just another reminder, the threat is out there and you need to take precautions when you're going out to areas when mosquitoes are active. For a list of some of those precautions, just go to our website, ctn.org. I'm Michael Russo.